Good morning. As you know, I'm not Peter Kleinman, um, but I uh, am going to be helping Peter with his uh, load of presentations here uh, today and talking a little bit about a survey we did with some uh, folks in Pennsylvania and in New York who are actually using the PNDEX tools as they exist on the ground. That's the place that I spend most of my time is working with producers and the advisors that work with producers on a lot of these issues. And so it's really great to come to a program like this. I've worked with uh, many of you, many of the folks and speakers over time, and it's great to be reminded and refreshed about all the, the, the details, the gory details that need to be worked out so that ultimately we can get something on the ground that works and is effective for, for producers. I haven't heard anybody say this this morning, but I wanna, I, one of the things that I came to my mind as I'm listening and when we talk about a few kilos per hectare of phosphorus loss, or Deanna just mentioned the idea of, well, one pound of phosphorus loss per acre in Ohio may be causing, causing problems in Lake Erie. Just want to remind folks that from a producer perspective, we can buy that fertilizer phosphorus for 40 or maybe 50 cents a pound. So, that, I mean, it's, 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 it's not even on the radar screen in terms of an economic issue for the producer. It's a social issue, it's one we have to grapple with, but I just want to remind people about uh, that sort of thing. And that's the kind of stuff that I look at. So we did this survey again so we could go out, okay, the folks that are actually dealing with this, it's really not the farmers. Um, in my perspective, the farmers are insulated from the P-Index. They don't know the workings of the P-Index. They shouldn't. Right? Their job is to implement, the planner develops a plan, the P-Index is part of that, and the farmers implement it. The planners in New York and Pennsylvania are the ones that know um, the phosphorus index intimately. Um, I guess we don't need to spend a lot of time here on how the phosphorus index works. We heard from several speakers this morning about the variability across states, um, accuracy, um, I'm not even sure that's a word right we ought to use in terms of the phosphorus index, and uh, nor, nor, nor should it be considered accurate. So we had questions to, for our planners. What do we want to ask them about? Um, so what's working with the current P index? Is it broke from the pers perspective of the planner? We know that EPA had some opinions about that, at least in some states, but we wanted to ask our own folks, uh, is what's working, what isn't working, what are the drivers of water quality violations? At the end of the day, or at the beginning of the day, what is it that gets us into trouble at the farm level? Okay, so what practices should we be encouraging or discouraging? Again, we can talk about is it particulate P, is it dissolved P, soluble P, whatever. What practices do we need to be implementing? What do we need to get people to do um, or could be or should be doing that are going to move us in the right direction. Um, Pennsylvania has a screening tool. It's a great way to um, uh, sift out and, and identify priorities and, and, and really focus the, the efforts and the work. New York doesn't. So we asked the planners in both states um, about uh, should we have a screening tool or not. And then we asked them this idea, this concept of should we stick with the state, um, the political boundaries, or should we go with what is, seems to be uh, more sensible from a scientific standpoint, this physiographic boundary concept? So really quickly, Pennsylvania, as I mentioned, has a uh, screening tool. If you're in a special protection watershed, if you've made significant management changes, um, you, you, pass, you bypass the screening tool and go right to the full-blown P-index. Um, in other cases, if you've got a pretty high soil test level of more than 200 ppm malic 3, or if you're close to a stream, again, you bypass that screening tool, you go straight to go and uh, use the phosphorus index. Source factors are going to be pretty familiar to most people, soil test, uh, manure rate timing method. Pennsylvania includes a P availability coefficient so that uh, poultry litter, for example, is treated differently than swine uh, slurry versus uh, dairy manure. And fertilizer, P rate, timing, and method are part of the source factors. Transport factors include erosion, uh, runoff potential via drainage class, whether there's subsurface drainage or not, and then the distance to the stream. 
New York, again, we have uh, the sources include the same uh, cast of characters, soil test P, manure P, rate timing and method for both fertilizer and manure P. New York, we divide ours out into a dissolved transport component and a particulate transport component. We include soil drainage class, flow distance to stream, whether it floods or not and how often, and we have a dissolved P index score. On the particulate P side, erosion, flow distance, flooding frequency, presence or absence of concentrated flow are part of um, the particulate P score. Okay, if you run uh, both the state's indices through uh, the various steps using the same parameters, um, or excuse me, this slide talks about we've got a little bit different break between low and medium and medium and high, but we all agree, going back to that mule barn uh, group that Andrew referenced early on, we all agreed in, uh, to break our P indices at 100. Anything more than 100 is very high and you can't apply any more phosphorus. So our response to the survey, we have, uh, we asked 37 certified nutrient management planners, 36 of them responded. Um, Quirin Kettering, some of you know, was a very, uh, assertive in, uh, in, in uh, doing some iron, some of you know Quirin are, are chuckling, um, to, to get uh, responses back. And about two thirds of them were private sector and a third were public sector planners. In Pennsylvania, they approached uh, 200 uh, uh, nutrient management planners and about 31 responded and it was more heavily weighted in favor of public sector versus private sector planners. I believe that, uh, I don't know if that's, that ratio follows uh, for the full 200, but I believe there's significantly more public sector planners in Pennsylvania. Is that right, Peter? So um, bottom line here with some of the responses, if you look at, um, we asked them, well, what's important in our current phosphorus indices on the source and the transport side? And in, in New York and really in Pennsylvania, for each of the elements identified on the source side, pretty much the commonality was all the planners agreed that all of the pieces of the source um, and transport factors were important. They didn't say there was anything um, that, that was not important, okay? So leave it all in, I guess, was, was uh, what they were saying there. In terms of what were, what were the things that were getting people into trouble, um, spreading close to streams seemed to be a hot one for the PA respondents or spreading before rain events and then there was a few things spread out around some other issues. In New York we had uh, seemed to have a lot more uh, hot button issues spreading before rain, spreading on frozen soils, um, close to streams, uh, not following the nutrient management plan um, seemed to be a pretty big uh, topic that was getting that would get people into trouble. Obviously the phosphorus index can't do anything about that, can it? Um, so what should or what should practices should the P index be encouraging? Um, if you look at the Pennsylvania folks, they were pretty hot on um, cover crops, setbacks and buffers, and also uh, soil erosion um, and using soil erosion type uh, control practices. In New York, we, uh, we tended to favor uh, incorporating manure, um, got a lot of uh, attention, maybe uh, having some uh, less connected fields. Cover crops, setbacks, and buffers uh, were almost uh, similar to the Pennsylvania respondents, okay? We were, we were less hot on um, imposing more erosion control issues, and there's some interesting um, discussions that probably ought to be had about uh, the Pennsylvania folks typically favored erosion control issues and, and New York respondents were less favorable. In terms of what practices should the P index discourage, again, um, really hot button issue for the Pennsylvania respondents were to keep manure off of fields that did not have um, uh, crops, crop residue or growing crops on them, um, presumably corn silage types of fields. And um, in New York, um, Basically, uh, sorry, there's a little bit of jump in the uh, slides there, but basically I think we favored more not applying manure to saturated soils or close to streams or without incorporation. Surface, surface applications should be discouraged according to the New York planners. Okay. Um, 
top seven changes for the P indices. Uh, again, Pennsylvania, they really honed in on uh, a lot of respondents felt like uh, giving more credit for cover crops and crop residues on the surface. Um, and erosion control took a, took a second place. Um, in New York, the timing, uh, so New York wanted um, favors weighting, changing weighting of the coefficients and um, timing of application should be get uh, more attention and then uh, the other responses were spread out across these other topic areas. So do we need a screening tool? This is an interesting one. This is uh, sort of the status quo prevailed. Um, New York said, now nah, we don't need a screening tool. And I think the reason for this is, well, we're already used to doing every field on every farm. We kind of figured that out. We've got it streamlined and the process is relatively simple. And so we're, we're great without a screening tool. And it looks like the Pennsylvania folks, you know, hey, they like their screening tool and that's their way of streamlining and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, as well. Also, in terms of state boundaries or physiographic regions, the um, New York planners, um, a majority of them or, or a plurality of them were interested or more in favor of the physiographic region concept. Um, I'm not sure that we would have a lot of different physiographic regions in New York, which might make implementation easier. I don't know if they thought that deeply into the process, but uh, the Pennsylvania folks mostly liked um, using a state boundary approach in their response, in their responses. In terms of uh, where to improve the New York P index, uh, our planners wanted to open up April and September. Um, those months get a little bit higher. Um, uh, you accumulate more points for applications in April and September, and our planners were saying, hey, you ought to go a little easier uh, on the score accumulation for applications in those months. And um, this really starts to get into the issue of what are the soil conditions and how good a predictor really is a month or a calendar date associated with that. And, and uh, as we look at it more, it's obviously um, not such a good way to, to parse out these things. So they want to move away from the calendar year and, and use field conditions and weather forecasts as a way to, to drive score. They really feel like we should be discouraging manure applications um, unless we incorporate and certainly um, less, allow less application on saturated soils and fields close to streams with steep slopes. As one of the developers of the New York P index, I realize that we do have a shortcoming in the index in that if your soil test P is low enough, you can get pretty close to stream in cir certain circumstances because of how our scoring, how our p-index works. So we recognize that and, and would agree with that as a shortcoming. So in terms of uh, BMPs, we should give more credit to cover crops and setbacks um, in, in New York. So Pennsylvania folks, um, so this is an interesting one. Even though they like the screening tool, they said if we want to have better management, we should evaluate all fields using the p-index. Um, so I, I get that. That makes sense. It's probably true. Uh, and I would not view that as inconsistent or problematic, although that's something we have to, the groups will have to look at. Want more credit for BMPs such as no-till and covers. Um, more clearly defined methods for evaluating field conditions, uh, talking to the farmer about options, that's a, that's a good one, and documenting information. They really want to discourage winter manure application or manure application without that ground cover. Again, um, that's a pretty consistent theme through the uh, survey results. And with that, I'm going to um, say thank you and uh, acknowledge the uh, co-authors of this this effort and appreciate the opportunity.